everyone, welcome to the Roto Grinders Morning Grind Podcast. I'm your host, Stevie TPFL. It's Tuesday, it's April 2nd, it is 2024. We have a nice nine game MLB slate to talk about here on today's podcast. Got some pitching um to talk about blanco throws the april fools no hitter <laughs> um congratulations to him like i was reading his, about his story earlier this morning when i was doing research and like signed at 22 for like five grand washed cars to help like support his mom and just awesome story and uh now you can say hey you know i threw a major league no hitter so really cool Joined today by my buddy Keith Eister. Going to be the regular like Tuesday guy this year. I, I don't know why I accidentally did it, but it's a, a happy accident because uh, <laughs> we get Chief, then we get Eyes, and uh, we get to start the right the week off the right way here. Yeah, glad to be here talking some baseball. Um, yeah, shout out to Ronel Blanco. What a what a game! I uh, wrote him up in the expert survey, tagged him in lineup HQ. I have about twenty percent. He landed mostly with Dodgers stacks, as you would imagine. The salary kind of works out with that. So needing some Dodgers to do some damage here in the late night window to uh, hopefully get get up to the top of some tournaments. But Houston just continues to turn out these like they're international free agents, but they're not like top of the class free agents at all. Like Framber Valdez was that type of guy. Luis Garcia was that type of guy. Um, Jose Urquidy, another like they just keep on. They yeah. sign these Dominican pitchers for like ten grand. And then six years later, they're like showing up on a major league mound, just looking absolutely outstanding. So it's it's a really a testament to their like pitching development team. But Houston does a great job with uh, p- pitcher development. So was all over Ronald Blanco today. Did not expect a no hitter by any means, but uh, congratulations to him. What a performance! Have to talk about another performance today too, Stevie. Shota Imanaga. Absolutely looks legit for my cubbies and uh yeah. couldn't be more excited. Good good signing there. I, I know it was yeah. Colorado and, and the wind was blowing in. He's gonna have home run problems, but the strikeout stuff is real for sure. Oh yeah, and I mean it's the Rockies. We're gonna be picking on yeah. the Rockies a lot this year. If they no get way. off these <laughs> if they get off these slates that start before, I mean, so it's like you gotta uh, I hate not including these games, but I also like really love like eight to ten game baseball slates, so it's like eh. You know, 15 game slates, I feel like it obviously offers more opportunity for people to make mistakes. So I, I do like those slates as well for baseball, but eight to 10 is a sweet spot. But um, my Red Sox doing good. You know, if uh, if Hancock hits his under strikeouts, I'll have a four and day over there on scores and odds. So um, my nice. betting card looks really good today. Um, so uh, was on a lot of the brave stuff earlier today. And I needed um, Riley to get over one and a half total bases and the game started raining and I, he was the guy that was up to bat and I was like, all right, well, he's not going to, this game's going to get postponed. And then it stopped raining. He came out and he hit a home run and then it started raining and get in the bottom and the end of the game. So he got over <laughs> his total bases. <laughs> so um, one of those several, several books are voiding Braves minus one and a half the run line on that game because it did not go nine full innings. That's absolute like criminal behavior. It has to go. Yeah. So it has to go eight and a half or more. So like if it's the home team. Yeah. So I mean, it's. It's like a catch twenty two. I mean, you win, you're gonna win some, and you're gonna lose some on that. I feel like so. Um, money line bets definitely more favorable in games that have potential weather issues. Um, so, you know, single game parlay, money line, something like that. Um, because I mean, I think we all kind of figured the Braves were gonna win that game today, and you know, even if you like them, maybe you could have money line or like money line with a single game parlay. But anyway. Uh, what's up, YouTube? Hope you're having a fantastic Monday night. Nine games. We got some pitchers. We got some hitters. We got a lot to talk about. We got some potential weather. We'll let Kevin Roth cover that in the morning. We're going to break down the slate like there is no weather like we always do. Detroit at New York facing the Mets. Eight total in this game. The Mets, a 124 favorite. Casey Mize against Adrian Hauser facing off in this one. Barn burners here. Uh, any interest here in Casey Mize? I do have some interest in Casey Mize. Um, I, the Mets are a, a decent offense, but it's a really good ballpark to pitch in. Former first-round pick, coming back from injury. Haven't seen him in a, a really long time, so not completely sure what to expect. And control was a little bit spotty in the spring. 
Um, guys that are coming back from injury, I, I'm definitely paying paying attention to their spring training stats. Uh, Mize threw about 20 innings, had 20 strikeouts, but he had nine walks as well. Um, the encouraging thing was he was over 70 pitches or at 70 pitches in his last two starts. So I feel like we're getting a full 85 to 90 pitches here. The Mets are not the best offense. Um, it's the ballpark here and potential strikeout ability for Casey Mize. Uh, he's 7,100. I think there's some upside at that price tag. So uh, I do have interest in Casey Mize. Slight interest for me. Um, it just, again, not like the sexiest matchup because, I mean, okay, I say that, and the Mets lineup right now that they've been rolling out has definitely had more strikeouts than it did last year. You know, we, we talked about this on the podcast yesterday. DJ Stewart, he's in this lineup. Harrison Bader is in this lineup. Joey Wendell's in this lineup. There's a lot more strikeouts just overall in this lineup. So it's not like the bottom half of the Mets lineup last year had like no power, but they also had very low strikeout rates, and it's just not the same lineup. So I had interest in my is coming in. Um, the walks are the biggest concern, like you said, you know, but the strikeouts were there. He had a good spring as far as that kind of stuff. So um yeah i mean for me on my it really just like he sets up more on DraftKings as like a potential sp2 play on fanduel i'm playing one of the like three or four studs on the slate i'm not overthinking fanduel today going to the other side of this game adrian hauser um i mean back to starting i i don't know what to do with hauser here <laughs> like he he was a guy at one point that like Early in his major league career with um, Milwaukee, we he was very serviceable. Um, he gets a great matchup against Detroit here, but I don't think I want to play Adrian Hauser today. Yeah, I, I don't think I do either. I think Detroit's going to be an improved offense this year, um, and Hauser just hasn't had it for several years now. I, I'm with you. Like He had some strikeout stuff back in the day with Milwaukee when he was coming up um, early on in his career, but it's kind of disappeared at this point. I just, I don't think there's any upside here. Um, I'm, I'm off a of Hauser, even though he he's also cheap and Detroit is probably the worst offense here. I I just play my similar price. I will say he had a fantastic spring. He had like, um, uh, 11 innings. Yeah. 11, 12 innings. I wrote it down. So I didn't forget 12 innings. He had a 14 to one um, strikeout to walk ratio. So, I mean, over a strikeout per inning, it is Detroit. I will say, I think the Detroit lineup this year is better than it was the last couple years. So I think it like if Detroit rolls out this lineup, that's kind of weak and they don't add in some of these lefties, like maybe, but I assume that Badu Carpenter, like these guys, Parker Meadows, like they're going to have, five six lefties in this lineup and hauser's strikeout rate just i mean just dips big time against lefties so i don't know he gives up a lot of hard contact too let's talk bats uh detroit bats here i mean riley green at 45 i think is really solid Kerry carpenter is someone i loved to play last year against right-handed pitching um came on really strong towards the end of the the season last year i don't know if i'd stack them ballpark stinks um but Keith, what are your thoughts about like maybe a one-off or like a little two-man here uh, with some of these lefties against Hauser? Yeah, I don't mind it. The thing that I'm having trouble with is the ballpark and potentially weather as well. Um, if it was in a different ballpark, I would absolutely be attacking Hauser here. But I agree. It's not a stack for me because of the park, because of the weather. I, and even home run. Like it's one of the worst home run parks in baseball. So I'm chasing home runs generally with my one-offs. I'm probably not getting to a ton of Detroit, but if I do, I'm definitely looking at lefties and green and Carpenter were the two that I definitely like. So same page, as far as that goes, I just, I, they're not going to be like targets or anything. It, if I, if I happen to need a $3,800 outfielder, $3,900 outfielder, Kerry Carpenter fits, I, I'm definitely fine going there. Yeah. You mentioned weather. This is obviously a game. We're going to be paying attention to weather. Um, going to be cold too. So Definitely a game we'll be watching what Roth has to say. Um, as far as the Mets bats go, I mean, you could play Pete Alonzo in any matchup. I don't necessarily love him um, today, like when you're paying up for like a top end first baseman. But I mean, I'm never going to tell you not to play Pete Alonzo because he can hit two home runs on any slate. So like if you're a 150 entry max person, you probably get exposure to Pete Alonzo every single slate you 150. 
I typically play three to five lineups. Um, he probably doesn't make the build for me in a three to five lineup build today. But I mean, if mid, if he sh- if if Mize is struggling with command, like Pete Alonso is definitely someone. If you miss a high fastball, he's going to hit it out of the ballpark in any ballpark. So he would be my favorite here, and then maybe get a little bit of exposure to a guy um, like Nimmo who has like that stolen base upside too, but. He's he's really started kind of slow to start the season, which is concerning. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with your thoughts on Pete Alonso. Just a guy you want to play in tournaments anytime he's on the slate because of that multiple home run upside. Um, don't care about ballpark or weather with that type of prodigious power. Maya's back before the injury really struggled with lefties, but New York, like Lindor's fine. I like the Nimmo call. I, I think I prefer Nimmo to Lindor. He's 500 cheaper. Um Maybe like if you could chase a, a cheap home run with a guy like uh, DJ Stewart or or Brett Beatty if they're in the lineup. Like I don't hate that, but again, it's it's rough weather. It's a rough, rough ballpark. Like chasing home runs is not ideal for this type of game. Um, but cheap lefties against Mize, I don't I don't hate taking deep tournament shots on. Uh, chat, you guys are awesome. I really like. Um... You guys in chat, they're they're asking me for another live winner. I don't know if you last night on the podcast I gave out Hamlin with like twenty five laps to go at eight eight to one, and the nice. caution came out and we got the win. Um, so, uh, Stevie, any thoughts on the Tigers' heavy early pinch hitting? It's so tough to say. I, I think you're going to see it a lot when a lefty is pitching. I don't think they want to take out carpenter and those guys when it comes to like a righty pitching and then a lefty comes in after i think you see more pinch hitting with like verling verling's gonna get pinch hit for a lot this year and these like right-handed batters just in general and like jake rogers he's a guy that like when he dhs might get hit for sometimes too so even when he catches he might get hit for uh because they do they can bring in the other um catcher um kelly yeah kelly so i'm not too concerned yet Outside of like, I mean, when you're playing Verling, he has to produce early because he's going to get pinch hit for Um, right when a righty comes in. Verling's probably out of the game. So, I I mean, I hope that answers your question. But yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to say. I think you can pinpoint like two or three guys in that lineup when there's a left handed pitching. When there's a left handed pitcher out there that have a high probability to get pinch hit for and you. I mean, you're playing those guys for two at bats, really. Um, So it's tough. All right, Atlanta at Chicago. These first three games are the three games that have some weather concerns for what it's worth. Um, Again, we'll see what Roth has to say. I don't mess with weather. I just break down slates. Um, We got Renardo Lopez going back to a starter role here with Atlanta, going up against our boy, Garrett Crochet. Um, I forget. It was like the crotchet rocket someone used in Discord on (laughs) opening day. I loved it. Um, I told him I was going to use it. So there you go. I forget who it was. Uh, Nine total in this game. Atlanta, 220 favorite. We'll go to Renato Lopez first. Had a great spring. Um, Transitioning back into a starting role here. White Sox lineup is definitely a lineup I'm okay with picking on. I mean, do you trust the spring numbers enough to... uh, potentially roll out a little Renato Lopez at 7,500 on like a SP two type of role here. Um, he's going to get run support if there's no weather in this game, Atlanta is going to put up some runs in this one. I just, I worry about believing in what we saw in spring too much, but I mean, Renato Lopez has always been a high K guy. So we, I think chasing strikeouts is okay at 7,500. Like, Anytime under like 8K, that's why our game is like under 8K to get six more Ks. I think under 8K, if you want to chase strikeouts and know that a guy's going to give up a run or two, it's okay. And I think Lopez kind of fits that build today. Yeah, I, I'm on board here. Um, he's had some success out of the bullpen. He struggled as a starter early in his career, but the Braves are a really smart organization. If they saw enough to sign this guy, and it, it was immediately after they signed him, they're like, he's going to compete for the fifth starter job for us. Like, they they signed him with the intent of him starting. Obviously, they have some young guys and things like that that they're they're waiting on to develop too. But Lopez is was good out of the bullpen. Strikeout rate was very good, like you said, and it, he gets a matchup against the White Sox. So, assuming that the the weather holds here, I have some interest. Um, 
I am a little concerned about the pitch count. 58 was as high in the spring. Um, he only threw 30 in his last spring training start. Now, you have to take pitch counts in the spring with a grain of salt because guys do side work all the time. They throw in the bullpen after their start or whatever. Um, so, I, But I feel like 80 is the right number, like 75 to 80 rather than 85 to 90, which is a little bit concerning for the upside. Uh, but the matchup, and he's cheap enough, I, I think – DraftKings SP2, I, I'm on board with that. Um, yeah, I, I think Lopez is is going to have success as a starter. I, I trust the Braves front office, basically, um, and they saw something in the guy. So I'm, I'm on board here. Yeah, so he – I was looking at some of his velocity numbers for spring two, and they were he was sitting in that like average of like 94, touching 95, touching 96 a little bit. That's fantastic for him. So um, – I mean, I'm in. I think I'm in. He's not like a guy like maybe one of five teams, potentially two of five teams, but definitely one of five team type build for me today on Lopez if the weather holds up here. Um, as much as I love Garrett Crochet the other day, um, dude, we we nailed this guy. Um, he, he pitched really well, good stuff. Um, I was really impressed by the no walks in that game against Detroit. Gave up a couple hits. Pitched really well. Don't play left-handed pitching against the Braves. Um, I, I mean, I, there's nothing you're going to even try to sell me on here, I don't think. But, I, I mean, kudos to him. Hat tip to him for his first start. We might go back to the well on him at times. But tough. one of the toughest matchups in baseball is lefties against the Atlanta Braves. This lineup is just stacked. Yeah, I, I cannot do it. I believe in the arm talent, but I, I wouldn't play Cy Young against the Atlanta Braves if he threw with his left hand, even if he threw, like, even with his right hand, there's just, there's no, I don't think I'll play a single pitcher against the Braves or the Dodgers that we'll get to later. Um, I don't think I'll play one against them all year. They're just too, too good, too deep. It's almost impossible. I mean, there's going to be some successful starting pitching outings against those two teams this year. Um, I don't think it's going to be crochet early in the year as good as he looked. I'm, I'm with you. Um, we were both on him on that first start. So congrats to him. Probably going to sit this one out. Can't wait to jump back on next time. Yeah. I don't know who he pitches against next time, but I'm, I'm in. I, I, again, I'm with you. I believe in the arm talent. Uh, he was, he was throwing smoke, man. Um, yeah. Landon bats as much as we liked him. Um, first thing I want to even mention right here is I, I really like Travis Darno's price today. 3,600. This is a guy that's consistently good against left-handed pitching so i wanted to start with him which is like it's more of like a price thing and the other guy i wanted to like bring up here a lot of people are going to stock stack the top half of this lineup um you know kelnick probably comes out duvall probably starts in this game so like that adds like another but i like i like the potential of like a wraparound stack here um arcia arcia hit yeah. left-handed pitching really really well last year so as much as i like like Ozunia and Riley and those guys like a Arcia Darno Acuna Riley type of stack like a an eight nine one two type of stack I think is going to be a little lower owned here and I mean I want exposure to Atlanta they're going to be a team that I get a lot of exposure to today so you can't bring up a name that I'm not going to say yes to um, even the lefties but I really like this spot for Atlanta today. Yeah, I, I'm certainly with you. Um, the the one like we have to keep an eye on the Chicago. It's going to be cold in Chicago, no doubt. Um, there's mm -hmm. potential rain in the forecast as well. So, spending up, I am not fully on board with that, just because I do believe in the talent of Crochet. But if you're going like Acuna, Riley, Albies, like you're spending a significant amount of salary on a team, like you basically need a team to go off for ten runs in that spot. Where if you're playing Darno, Arcia, Duvall you don't necessarily like one home run from any of those guys and you're on your way. Um, so I, I love your sentiments there. Like I completely agree. Like the cheap guys at the bottom of the order who are, who have hit lefties really well. I'm highly interested in, I do think there's severe pinch hit, hit risk, especially with a guy like Duvall. Um, I think Arcia and Darno even are a little bit safer. Um, Duvall, I would say is definitely coming out of this game. Once a righty reliever comes in, um, but, Maybe not. We'll see. We'll see how they play it. I just I think there's significantly more risk with Duvall than there is with Arcia and Darno. Um, but that that is part of what you get with playing the bottom of the order, guys. I will mention um, Ozzy Albies has 
always mash left-handed pitching second base like he's he's going to be one of the top plays even if i'm not stacking i don't hate an albies one-off um riley's crush lefties as well just third break third base is a lot stronger of a position uh so yeah interest all around i don't know that i'll full stack I'll, i think the the bottom of the order mini is what i will use the most but i'll certainly have a couple of full brave stacks too all right, going to the White Sox. When we didn't even mention it um, when we were breaking down Lopez, but Jimenez got hurt Sunday, so he might not even be in the lineup here. And if Eloy is out of the lineup, that like that's even more of a bump for me for Lopez. I mean, outside of like a mini stack or like a hedge stack here, um, I don't really. I mean, I like Lopez today enough where I don't have a ton of interest in the White Sox bats, and I mean, I just don't see a lot of potential out of the White Sox bats in general this year. Yeah, same. Uh, him and his is probably probably their second best hitter behind Robert. So taking him out of this lineup is a, a huge blow to an already really weak lineup. I'm definitely not stacking him. Probably not chasing home runs either. To be honest, just like it's going to be really cold in Chicago. So n- love this park for uh, home runs in the summer. Not necessarily in uh, April. Yeah, like weather weather is definitely a potential here. Um... We should mention, though, even with it being like 40 degrees, like there is like 20 to 25 mile an hour projected wind, like dead center, um, like straight out. So ball might not be flying off the bat as much because it's going to be 40 degrees. But if we do get like a 20 to 25 mile an hour, like consistent wind, um, that's definitely going to help the ball fly a little bit more here, too. So where it's like the opposite here in this next game, we got potential rain in Chicago here for Colorado at Chicago Cubs, seven total. Um, Kyle Freeland and Javier Assad facing off in this one. Cubs, a big 196 favorite. The thing is, we got wind blowing across the field at 20 to 25 miles an hour here. It's it's windy in the Windy City. Uh, let's just see if it's rainy or not in the morning. Um, so break down the pitchers here. Kyle Freeland stinks. Um, I won't play Kyle Freeland this year. I, like I, I could tell you that right now. There's not an instance that I'll play Kyle Freeland. He could be facing a triple A lineup and I wouldn't play Kyle Freeland. So I, I mean, do you have any interest in Freeland? No, I have no interest in Freeland. Okay. He could, yeah. Four, four K facing triple A lineup and I still wouldn't play him. No, he stinks. Um, yeah. I, this guy and like, no, no, no harm to you, Kyle Freeland. You do your thing. Um, he got a nice contract. Was it last year? I think. I mean, it's just it's hard to find pitching for Colorado. Yeah, nobody wants to pitch in Colorado. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, let's go to the other side here. Your boy Javier Assad facing an atro. I mean, they're pitching bad. Their lineup's bad. The Rockies just need to sell and do everything they can to try to start rebuilding this team because it's just not good. Uh, any interest here in Javier Assad? I mean, I, if we're dealing with weather and there's any risk at all, I'm out completely. But I think you have to, ju- just because Colorado is the matchup, you have to have some interest. I definitely prefer Mize if you can get up there for another 500. Assad, he's not going to go super deep into the game. He's a below average strikeout pitcher. But I think the run prevention should be pretty good, especially if there's some wind. We know it's going to be cold. As long as the rain is staying away, I have some interest, but... If there's any rain risk at all, then I just won't bother. I'll, I'll just use Mize as my my cheap guy, and and even Lopez at seventy five. Like, there's cheap enough pitching where we don't absolutely need him. So if any risk at all, and I'm out. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I'm kind of in the same boat with you because you just you look at the Rockies lineup and you want to play pitchers against them. The bottom half of this lineup is atrocious, so you want to play pitchers against them, but like. You said Assad's a below average pitcher as far as strikeouts. And he had a terrible spring training. The only reason he's in this rotation is because Tyon is hurt right now. So I don't expect him to pitch deep into this game. And I think he could potentially struggle. I think he could potentially struggle enough that I actually kind of have some slight interest in some of these Rockies bats. Um, If the weather holds off here it's more of a mini stack but i i really like nolan jones i talked about him a lot last year um big power just like a free swinger type of kid um and i I say kid guy um getting old man (laughs) but nolan nolan jones is someone that i I like against lower strikeout pitchers and that's kind of what assad is so i think jones 
and Ryan McMahon would like highlight the two bats here. And then like, if I want to add in like a third batter here, I would be okay with adding a third and making like a, a three man stack. Yeah. I don't hate that call at all. Um, Assad's certainly not invincible. Uh, like you said, he was ticketed for the bullpen this year and injuries in the rotation for, kind of forced him in there. So like, I'm, I'm not scared of trying to pick on him. If the weather was be- better, I might even have interest in a full stack um, just because the Rockies are pretty cheap outside of Nolan Jones, like 4,200 Charlie Blackman, everybody else is cheaper than that. So yeah. I don't hate Chris Bryant at, at 4k. I, my two favorites I'm with you on Nolan Jones and, and McMahon are certainly my, my two favorites. I'd throw Brian in there as my third, probably. I don't love that he's first base outfield, but that's what he's going to be because that's where he's playing now. Um, Tovar is at shortstop at 3,700. If you're looking for a cheap guy, has a little bit of speed. Don't hate that guy either. You see, like, um, Ryan McMahon might actually be healthy this year. I know he's, like, dealt with injuries the last couple years. Um, It'd be really cool to see him be healthy all year. Uh, He started the season with, like, three multi-hit games in a row. Uh, That's always fantastic. So, good matchup for him. As far as the Cubs bats here, I mean, I'm very, very interested in the Cubs if the weather is okay, Um, just in general here, because Freeland stinks, and Christopher Morrell is a guy I love against left-handed pitching. Jan Gomes at catcher had a fantastic year against left-handed pitching last year. I mean, no one knows the Cubbies like Keith. This is his team. I, I mean, if the weather holds up here, even in a colder game with the wind blowing across the field, I have some interest. I don't know if I full stack them because of how much wind dictates this ballpark, but I, I could definitely see myself using them as a mini stack as well. Yeah, it's the weather is going to dictate what I do with the Cubs. I have interest no matter what. Um, not only is Freeland terrible, the Rockies bullpen is terrible as well. So. Whoever's playing the Rockies this year, spoiler alert, we're, we're going to have interest in. Um, I love the Morrell call. Suzuki had as hot of a spring as anybody in baseball. Uh, 4,400, he's way too cheap. Love him against lefties as well. If Garrett Cooper starts at first base, I think he's a phenomenal cheap first base play. Um, he's fallen off a little bit, but he, he was still very good against lefties last year. That's why they brought him in. Um, he made the team because Patrick Wisdom got hurt in spring training. Uh, Cooper's 3,700. If you're ch- if you're chasing a home run, uh, I-, I could definitely go there. Love the Gomes call as well. Like living in the mid range here with Morel, Suzuki, Cooper, and Gomes, I think is where I'm going. Cooper probably has a ton of pinch hit risk. Like he's getting lifted as soon as a righty comes in. Uh, they'll put Michael Bush in for him more than likely. And then getting up to like a Swanson or a Horner, even Bellinger was incredible against lefties last year. Hap's probably the the last guy I would target here. Uh, just doesn't have the power from the right side that he does from the left side. Uh, but anybody else is fully in play. I'll have at least one full stack of them, um, unless it's, it looks like it's going to rain out and Roth has a, a orange red tag on it or something. But yeah, tons of interest here. Yeah, and that's the last game that we worry about with weather. So that's always good. Uh, moving on here, we got Toronto at Houston. I mean, does Toronto get a hit today? Um, <laughs> eight and a half total. Houston, a 158 favorite. Jose Barrios, Framber Valdez facing off against each other here. Getting some pitchers now that have made a start to start the season. Um, Jose Barrios looked really good in that Tampa start. Uh, any interest here in Barrios at 7,700 against Houston? I just am not going to play pitchers against Houston this year. I don't think very similar to Dodgers and Braves. They're just, they're too deep of a lineup. They, they don't strike out. Um, Barrios did look good. He's cheap, but I just, I don't see the upside here against Houston. Hey, for what it's worth for people hanging out, listening and stuff. Um, I actually, I watched quite a bit of the Houston Toronto game before we like started recording and stuff. I think Bowden, Francis is someone that is might might be usable. Um, he has good strikeout stuff, dude. Like he has yeah. good strikeout stuff. He just he struggles with command, and like we saw a couple home runs hit off him really early. Um, he just he missed he missed the spot a couple times, and like when you do that in the major leagues, like you're especially against a guy like Kyle Tucker. Like sorry, this is not going to work. But I I think Bowden Francis, depending on like some of his starts coming up, might be someone we target for some strikeout props and stuff too. I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm with you. I don't have a ton of interest here in Barrios. Um, 
Valdez is always like that guy that I, I never get right. He's going to face a lot of righties here, but I mean, Toronto is a very reverse splits hitting team. Their righties hit righties really well. They really struggle with lefties pitching. Like they have no power. Um, 102 ISO for the projected starting lineup here. I, the price on Valdez is so tempting at 8,500 in this spot. But I, I hate playing this guy. His command was awful. He was yep. really struggling with walks in that Yankee. And the Yankees don't walk. This is a much more patient offense. Um, I don't think I can do it with Valdez today, especially after watching this team get no hit and like maybe get some ownership because of that. Uh, I think I'm going to be out on the pitching in this game. I think I'm with you. Um, Framber pitched like absolute trash in his first start of the season. He got bailed out by like three double plays. And as a guy who was sweating his uh, under strikeouts, like he should have thrown at least 10 more pitches in each of like the first three innings <laughs> and had like three or four runs scored off of him. And the guy just kept getting bailed out by ground ball double plays. That's what he does. That's totally his profile. Um, but it, it made his strikeout. Uh, prop a little bit of a sweat just because his pitch count was so low, even though he was walking everybody. I don't think I'm on him. Like, I don't know, know that Toronto's offense is, is necessarily that great. They were overrated last year. Um, like I think everybody's on board that they're more of a average to slightly above average offense than an elite offense. Now um, they still don't strike out a ton. So I still don't hate going under on Valdez strikeouts here, but I, I don't think I'm playing him at 8,500. Um, especially if his command is going to be off, like there's just, there's no upside here. All right. Going to the bats in this one, anything standing out to you for Toronto? No, I mean, Valdez is still capable of getting that ground ball to get himself out of any trouble. Um, just kind of talked about it. He's not a guy that gives up a ton of home runs because he's so good at inducing ground balls. So I don't think I'm chasing home runs here. Um, Maybe a guy like Springer going back to Houston, I, I could certainly see that. I, I don't hate him as a one-off with some, with big power. Of course, you can always use Vlad in that that type of scenario. Um, yeah, I mean it's Vlad and Springer for me. I don't think I'll I'll play Bichette at that price. Turner is fine, but I think I'd just be chase. I'd, it'd be a one-off for a, for a home run. Uh, Kirk is a cheap catcher. If you want to go there, has power. Yeah. Um... I think I'm with you. I don't have a ton of interest in Toronto, but I don't mind chasing a home run or two. Um, and I think Vlad and Springer would be the two guys I'd chase. Turner. I think Turner's okay, too. Um, yeah. David Schneider has some power. Look, they have power against lefties. I just don't like stacking against Valdez. He, like you said, he. I don't have his BABIP in that game in front of me, but I bet you his BABIP was super, super friendly. Um, yeah. going to the Houston bats against Barrios. I mean, Jordan Alvarez off to a really slow start. He's going to break out of it. Uh, we know that's coming. Kyle Tucker, two home run game here on Monday night. I mean, they're eventually going to price up, um, Diaz at catcher eventually, I hope because he, he's like 30% every slate. And like, you have to play a little bit because he's a, he's so cheap. Um, what are your thoughts on the Houston bats? Yeah, I absolutely love Jordan Alvarez and Kyle Tucker. Um, Berrios has struggled with left-handed power throughout his entire career. Uh, he's a good enough pitcher where I don't think I'm stacking against him, but I will have a ton of Alvarez and Tucker. All right. We got Yankees at Diamondbacks. Um, nine total in this one. Diamondbacks, a slight 120 favorite. Nestor Cortez, Cortez against Zach Gallen. Uh, let's talk Cortez first. I mean, just not a guy that I was very interested in going up against Houston. Arizona a little bit worse against left-handed pitching than they are against right-handed pitching. But I think they're good enough that I still don't want to play Cortez. Unless, I will say, like, they're not going to, but if they have, like, four lefties in this lineup, maybe. But I don't expect Jock to play. It'd probably just be Carroll. Right, I, I think they'd get Jock out, and I think they'd get McCarthy out of this lineup here. Right, I, I don't know. Yeah, maybe McCarthy. Yeah, plays, but maybe only Jock two certainly lefties. won't play. Maybe well, yeah, McCarthy um, for the defense, but Jock, Jock certainly won't be in there. Gritchick, right? Gritchick would play. Yeah. 
or is he hurt? I, I forget. Anyway, um, I think Richick's actually on the IL, right? I yeah, think he's he hurt. is. Yeah. Uh, All right. All right, and they just they lost somebody um, over the weekend too. Um, Alec Thomas got hurt, but all right. Any interest in Cortez here? No, I. I mean, I think he's a better pitcher than the price tag. He's just opened the season with r- two brutal matchups. Um, I don't like playing pitchers against Arizona either. Another low strikeout team. Very solid offense. Seventy three hundred. You could you could maybe talk me into it um, if I was taking a shot on. A guy in the seven K range that wasn't Mize, maybe he's in that conversation, but I don't know. I, I don't love it. Nothing to be excited about. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it in Cortez first start. He had a really bad spring and it didn't look much better in that Houston start. He's gonna get some strikeouts. Like he he has really good strikeout stuff. It's just he's gonna give up hits and some runs as well. And this is a tough spot. Tough matchup. Um, tough matchup for Zach Gallen, but I think I'm okay with rolling the dice a little bit here on Gallen. Um, he didn't have a great first start. Yankees have a lot of strikeout potential in this lineup. And I mean, top end pitching, definitely something I want to pay, pay up for um, on most slates. What are your thoughts here when it comes to Gallen? Yeah, definitely on board with Gallon. The Yankees are def- – it's definitely a boom-bust spot. Like, there's so much power in this Yankees lineup um, that you have to be afraid of it. But Gallon is one of the best pitchers in baseball. So I, I have interest here. 90 pitches in his first start. He's a guy that they're going to they're gonna let go. I think we could see up to 95, maybe even 100 in this spot. Um, not a huge strikeout guy, but the Yankees lineup kind of um, helps him out in that department. I think he go, could go deep into the game if his if he's on and he can rack up some strikeouts against this lineup. So I, I definitely have interest. I, he's not my favorite pitcher on the slate. I like one one other guy better, um, but he's certainly in that conversation. All right, yeah, there is a guy that I like more today as well up here, but I hate playing more than like fifty percent on a pitcher. And like I say that, remember, I play three to five teams, so like fifty percent for me is not as much as like 50% one for 150. Uh, if I was playing 150, it'd be hard for me to play more than like 30% on a pitcher on most slates. So um, Yankees bats, I think like when you're looking at Zach Allen and how you want to attack him, you just want to attack him with power. Um, it, I don't think it matters which side of the plate. I think you just want to attack him with power. He gives up a little bit more fly balls to righties. He gives up a little bit more hard contact to righties. So I think when you're looking at these Yankees lineup, like you're interested in – Guys like Torres, Judge, Stanton. I will say this about Soto. He's he's a fantastic patient hitter. He's not my favorite, like spend up DFS wise, right? Like he's a guy that walks a lot. You really want to attack him against like fly ball guys because he hits the ball on the ground a ton. So like Juan Soto is a phenomenal hitter, but he's he's a guy that like when he's getting steam, I love being underweight on him because I mean, a good day for Soto is like three for three with some some singles and, I mean, walks. Uh, he loves to walk. So I like Soto. He's a good hitter. One of the top hitters in baseball. It's just, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a little concerned when I pay up. He's 6,300 on DK today. Like, he's, he's up there. I think I'd rather chase the two home run game than the three hit game from Soto with Judge. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything that you just said there. I actually have quite a bit of Soto here on Monday night because I like the matchup better, but the, the thoughts you laid out are generally how I feel about Soto. Um, he has huge power. He just doesn't swing all that often. He loves to take his walks, like you said. Um, so I don't, I don't play him a ton in DFS as well. I thought it was a good spot for him Monday night. Hasn't done anything yet, but this matchup against gallon, I'm kind of with you. Like I, I'm off gallon does well at inducing ground balls in it in a tough matchup, I'd rather just chase somebody who I know is going to let it fly. Those, those names are Aaron judge, Giancarlo Stanton, Glaber Torres. Like those are the three I'd be chasing a home run off of gallon. Um, probably out on Soto at that price. I don't hate Rizzo at 4,200, but definitely not stacking against gallon. I think he is, he's an elite pitcher, but I don't mind trying to find a home run off off of him. Austin Wells is sneaky. Good. Um, I don't know if like we'll see it for a whole season, but we saw it at the end of last year. 
he gets a lot of barrels and he hits the ball in the air a lot. Like he's a guy I love playing in Yankee Stadium. So just saying, um, he's a guy that I'm definitely gonna be playing in Yankee Stadium a lot this year. I know Keith, you know me with cheap catchers, man. I'm always in. Um, whoever it is, don't care. Um, I'm really sad that like a chalky keep cheap catcher keeps getting there every night. Um, <laughs> Arizona. I mean, Gary L scorching start, um, just a scorching start. Love him in this spot. And uh, Christian Walker is one of my favorite hitters on the slate. I love Christian Walker against lefties. And I think he is going to excel in this matchup. They brought in Suarez. Suarez saw his power number, power numbers drop a lot last year. So I'm a little concerned about him. Marte is much better from the left or the, yeah, the left side of the plate than the right side of the plate. Um, he's so good from the right side of the plate. A lot of interest in Walker, a lot of interest in Gary L. I'm not saying I won't full stack them. Yankees bullpen still really solid. I think it's more of a three-man, four-man type of stack for me on Arizona today, but very interested in these power righties. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, I thought Marte, I'm, I'm looking now, yeah, he, he was better against uh, righties than he was against lefties. I feel like that was flipped earlier in his career, but last year he was definitely stronger. Um, against righties than he was against lefties. Love the Christian Walker call. I'm, I'm right there with you. He is an elite option today at 5K. Uh, mashes left-handed pitching. Guriel on fire. It's hard to pay for Carroll in, in the lefty-lefty. He's going to be lower owned than he typically is, um, but he's 5,800, and he's definitely worse from the left side of the plate. So I agree. It's hard to full stack it when I don't love Carroll at his price. Um, Walker is a one-off I absolutely love add Guriel in there and maybe even go down to somebody like Perdomo uh, as a cheap option, make it a little three man. I, I have enough respect for Cortez as a pitcher where I'm probably not full stacking here, but I certainly don't hate a three man. And I, I love chasing home runs off of him. Um, We also should mention like blaze Alexander should start here. Um, yeah, good call. He'll DH. So I don't mind him cheap 2,900. So I think he's solid and, if you're looking to get off like the chalky cheap catcher, um, Gabriel Moreno is a really solid hitting catcher, especially against left-handed pitching. And sometimes bats like in the, like the five, six hole here um, against lefties. So yeah, I think he's solid too. Boston at Oakland, eight total Boston, a 142 favorite Brian Bayo against Alex Wood in this one. Bayo Bayo got the opening day start against Seattle. Kind of labored in that start. Um, it just wasn't great, you know. Bayo is really good or really bad. Um, there's just no thing. The the thing is, I watched a lot of that game, obviously. It was opening day. It was Red Sox. Um, he didn't have, like, that stuff, dude. He didn't have, like, that put-out stuff. And Oakland's not a great offense, so, like, you could potentially get away with, like, not having that, like, overpowering, dominant stuff. And I have interest in Bayou, obviously, at 8K. Um, if I'm going to play Houch as much as I did on Monday night, <laughs> I'm going to play Bayou. Um, what are your thoughts here on him? Yeah, I mean, he's an arm I'm really high on this year. And I played a ton of him in that first start against Seattle. I thought it was a great spot for him. I bet is over four and a half Ks. And he just didn't have it. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm off of him. I'm, I'm willing to go back. He had 84 pitches. Hopefully we see a step forward with the stuff because it's another fantastic spot for him uh, at Oakland, which is a spot we're going to be playing pitchers all season long. Ballpark, ter uh, great pitchers park, terrible lineup. Um, it's a great spot. At 8K, Bayo is a guy I have a ton of interest in. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm just going to go right back there. I, I'll chalk it up as two opening day jitters. 84 pitches was encouraging. Um think you should get at least that in this spot and it's a matchup against Oakland so yeah I'm I'm in yeah I mean Houts has seven strikeouts through like five innings and he's not a huge strikeout guy so you're hoping that your open Bay shows up and pitches well in this game should get some run support too Alex Wood on the other side of this game came over from San Francisco kind of pitched in that like long relief weird role that we talked about yesterday with Sean Mania. 6k is a solid price point but he's just not a pitcher i like to play um in general uh, i'm gonna be out here on wood do you have any interest in him no interest for me either um 
Boston doesn't strike out a ton. I'm really worried about how deep Wood's going to go. Um, we Even when he was with the Dodgers before San Francisco, like he was really limited in his pitch counts. Um, so I, he's cheap enough where it wouldn't surprise me if he could go five innings and get five strikeouts. Like maybe it's useful, but I think I'll pass. I'll say like Boston does have a lot of lefties. I mean, they are definitely going to platoon some of these guys out, but yeah, let's talk Boston bats. Uh, Any interest here in the Red Sox? Tough ballpark for a full stack. I think wood is still, sort of serviceable it's more about the upside for dfs not being a great strikeout pitcher not going deep into games um but i'm, I'm not afraid to attack him i just the ballpark kind of has me off if this was in fenway i would have a ton of interest in boston bats but out in oakland i'm probably not there um i don't hate a couple of one-off you can certainly chase home runs even in a tough park uh because wood will will give up some of those Story is certainly the guy I have the most interest in at 4,200. Don't even hate Devers, lefty, lefty. Tyler O'Neill has huge power. Those are the guys. I'd be looking, just chasing one-off home runs, I think. Oh, Donovan with the bomb. I Dude, Keith, I got a little sweat going here in baseball, man. I have a really sick Houston-St. Louis stack with Tanner Houch going on FanDuel. It's nice. at 183 with 30 innings left. Um, keep going, cards. Let's go. Love to see it. Um, I know there's a lot of Cardinals fans in chat too, so um, I'm rooting for the Cards tonight. They were, I mean, the two favorite stacks for me on the podcast yesterday were the Cardinals and the Astros. So glad that glad that that team's doing well. Um, for me on Boston, I really like O'Neill. He's a fly ball guy, ground ball pitcher in Wood. He hits left handed pitching really well. Very fair price tag at like 4,300. So I, I really have a lot of interest in Tyler O'Neill. Outside of that, I don't think i have a lot of interest in playing a lot of boston bats here like we might get some cheap righties in this lineup today so like maybe we use them as like cheap one-offs but bobby dahlbeck definitely pops to me a little bit here he's 2800 you could play him at third base i don't know if i'd play him at first base um i, I like bobby dahlbeck a little bit but i, I really like tyler o'neill uh big fly ball guy power he's the type of guy that can hit you two home runs in this type of game so i don't know if i'd stack boston though and I like stacking against Alex Wood. But like you said, if this game was in Boston, I think we'd have a lot more interest in the Red Sox here. And then on the Oakland side, I don't know, man. They're really cheap. But, I mean, that's I think that's all they got going for them here. If Bayo is struggling with command, maybe, you could take, like, a speed guy. Like, if Ruiz hits leadoff, right? Like, if Ruiz hits leadoff here, They sent maybe, Ruiz down today. Did they? I mean, yeah. there you go. Um, that's crazy. Like, wh- wh- why? Why not see what you have in the guy? I don't it's, they many, said he, he, he had, needs to work on getting on base more, which he does, but let him do it in the majors. What do you have to lose? Service how time many stolen bases guess, did he but... have? Like, he had a ton last year, didn't he? Yeah. Like, the dude that St. Louis is using, that Scott guy, he can't get on base, but they know when he gets on base, <laughs> he just steals. So, like, I don't know. Like, how do you, how do you send him down when, like, I'm not even going to go on this rant. Let's move <laughs> on. Uh, oh, no. Do you have any interest in the Oakland Bats? I mean, no, I, I believe in Bayo. I think that we kind of had a blip there on opening day. You can certainly chase some home runs against him, but had solid control last year, tough ballpark. I, I, I'm not stacking. I can't even think of, of like Langoliers as a cheap catcher, maybe Blade as an outfielder or some power, but mild interest at best. So, yeah, my lineup is St. Louis with Donovan, Arnado, Gorman, Goldie, Tucker Alvarez, Devers, Volpe, Houch, um, for who was asking the chat. And uh, Alvarez would have done anything. Yeah, Jordan had a bad game. He's he's off to a really slow start. Had a lot of him today. I had a lot of Tucker. I had a lot of Tucker on FanDuel today. Just kind of fit builds for me. I ended up in that range a lot with like last piece. So um, I have some good FanDuel teams going because of that. So and it never sucks to like have that guy that hits the two home runs and like really be heavy on him. So I think yeah. he was on four of my five builds over there. So nice. it's kind of worked out. And I don't usually do that on purpose. I just, I like Houston a lot today. All right, moving on. We got Cleveland at Cleveland at Seattle. Seven total. Seattle's a 120 favorite. Shane Bieber, Luis Castillo, two solid pitchers facing off against each other. 
We, I mean, we, we're going to start here with Shane Bieber. He looked lights out. It was Oakland, but he looked really good. Um, what are your thoughts here on Mr. Biebs? The Biebs is the best play on the slate, in my opinion. Uh, I am totally buying what we saw in that first start. Like you said, it was Oakland. It was a, a great matchup. Seattle, I think, is a really good matchup as well. They struck out at the second highest rate in baseball yeah. last year. Um, so there's there's plenty of upside here. Bieber, I mean, much publicized offseason trip to driveline, which I'm a firm believer in. I think it really helps pitchers improve. Had a 80% well, I have it right here. 80% whiff rate on a slider it, that he threw 24% of the time. Like though that's insane numbers. Um I am I am buying the the step forward or the step back to dominance for Shane Bieber. I love the matchup against Seattle. Uh, lots of strikeouts in the lineup. I'm with you. Um we targeted Seattle for strikeouts a lot last year, and I don't feel like Seattle went out and got better. Um you know, Polanco is a guy that strikes out a bunch. He's going to hit really well, but he's going to strike out a bunch. So bringing him in, Mitch Garver coming in. Garver, 26% Ks last year. So I think we just added more strikeouts to this lineup. And I, I think a guy like Beaver, and it's kind of why I had some interest in McKenzie on Monday. I think Beaver and what we saw, like we saw swinging strikes. Yes, it's Oakland, but we saw swinging strikes. That's what we need to see from this guy. Like his swinging strike rate that was really down last year. So I think that was a really good sign. Uh, the other side of this game, Luis Castillo struggled against Boston in his opening day start through 90 pitches though. Really solid. Um, Cleveland's a tough strikeout team. I, I don't necessarily love playing pitchers against Cleveland because they just don't strike out a ton. Any interest here in Castillo? I don't like him anywhere near as much as Gallon, and definitely not as much as Bieber. Like he's he's certainly third on my list of the spend up guys on the slate. Um, I might prefer him more than Framber, but I I'm, I don't like him a lot. At, I think I'll just go overweight on Gallon and Bieber. To be honest, it's the matchup, like you mentioned. Cleveland is just a team that makes too much contact. Um, I don't see a ton of upside here. Castillo is a guy who has struggled early in the season the last couple of years as well. Um. So I probably will just sit this one out on him. Uh, he, he'll, he'll turn it on and he'll become lights out for another two months or something eventually. Uh, but I, I'd like to see it out of him a time or two. Uh, pretty rough start there against Boston in his first first go around. Uh, I I definitely prefer Gallon and Beaver to him. I just don't love the price, right? Um, yeah. Had they enticed us with the price a little bit, like ha if he was on Monday slate, I think we would have like got into maybe taking a little bit more uh, and like Monday pitching actually worked out pretty well um, for as ugly as it looked on paper. So yeah, I mean, overall for me, not very interested, probably don't get to Castillo today, but that doesn't mean I'm going to play Cleveland bats. I, I don't think I want to play the Cleveland bats here either. Um, Cleveland's off to a really strong start. We talked about it yesterday. Um, they're off to a really strong start. So like there's some upside in, taking it here um oh hancock got removed from the game there we go got my i'm four and oh nice. today on scores and odds i like it i like those undefeated days Heck um yeah. sweep yeah we like those four four no um I, uh, the fifth pick i was gonna write up to hit but i didn't write it up so we'll call it four no day <laughs> um anyway completely getting sidetracked here which is fine any interest here in the We'll call them kind of hot Cleveland Guardians here. It, it's an offense that you just don't like to stack because there's not enough power here. Um, I certainly don't mind Jose Ramirez. Josh Naylor is fine. Even Andres Jimenez is is okay. It's just there's there's not any exciting hitters. Um, they're just a pesky pesky bunch of hitters they're contact hitters not power hitters and power is what pays the bills in dfs so not a team i generally stack castillo i think is a good pitcher even if i think he's not quite right just yet i don't know that i'll have a ton of stacks on against him um i, I certainly don't mind playing playing one-offs but he's good enough where I, I won't be full stacking him i don't think it's the spot to stack against him i, I mean cleveland a team that i had some exposure to on Monday, but I don't know. I don't think you want to play bats in this game in, in general, right? Like I don't, I don't think I want any of the Seattle side of this game either. 
yeah, I'm, I'm definitely with you. I, I think Bieber is back to being a dominant pitcher, and I'm not playing Seattle. St. Louis at San Diego, seven and a half total here. Padres a 134 favorite. Miles Mikolas against you, Darvish. Uh, Miles Mikolas, hey, he said he was working on a lot of um, new breaking ball stuff and was, <laughs> you know, really feeling it. He had five strikeouts against the Dodgers. So he definitely had a little bit more swinging stuff. But I mean, this dude just, he throws the bats. Like I, I watched some of that Dodgers game, he just throws the bats. Like, he has good breaking ball stuff, but he's going to get hit. I, I just – I don't want to play Miles Mikolas here. No, me either. Simple, easy, yeah. moving on. You, Darvish. Darvish is like that rare pitcher. Like, Glass now was supposed to pitch today, too. We'll talk about that situation in the next game. They moved the whole rotation back a day. Um, Darvish is making, like, his third start of the season. Like, we've already kind of seen yeah. – he looked way better. Um against the Giants and he did against the Dodgers. Any interest here in Darvish? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's 8,200. So like we say it a lot that he's no longer an elite strikeout pitcher, um, but he's priced more like a middle of the rotation guy now at 8,200. I will say the concerning thing has been his pitch count. And I know the Dodgers yep. are going overseas playing the Dodgers messed with their spring training. 78 pitches in the last one. Maybe we see him in the high 80s in this one. I, I think 90 would be a, a max for him. But if he had worked a little deeper into a game, I would have more interest. Um, the strikeouts showed up against San Francisco. I don't know if I necessarily expect that to continue. I think he continues to be around a league average strikeout pitcher. Um, but at this price, I think you can take some shots here. Um, I do have interest in the Cardinals' bats too. But because of the price, mild interest in Darvish. For what it's worth, I wouldn't be shocked if Darvish gets moved today. Like if they move, if they do what the Dodgers did here and move move it and like do like a little bullpen bullpen type of game here. But if if it is Darvish, I don't really have a ton of interest in him. I actually have some slight interest in the Cardinals bats again. Um, Cardinals against right-handed pitching have some solid bats. You know, just in general, we saw Donovan have a really solid game on Monday. We know you know Gorman is a guy when you don't have like elite strikeouts, he can hit you. I don't know if I'd full stack this team again. I think it's more of a three man type of stack, but until until the sites kind of adjust Don, Donovan's price, I'm going to keep playing this guy. I think he's just too cheap hitting in this leadoff spot on the road. You know, likely getting four, potentially getting five at bats. Um, I, I think Donovan is just going to be a guy I'm playing a lot right now. Yeah, I, I like that. He's cheap, thirty six hundred. Um, I wish he had infield eligibility still, but. Outfield will work. Will have to work. Gorman is the guy I absolutely love. Left-handed power against Darvish. Absolutely interested in that. And we have to talk about the two young speedsters because Darvish is one of the easiest guys to steal off in the entire yes. league. Mason Wynn and Victor Scott hitting at the bottom of the order. Don't care. Scott is still minimum price. Uh, Wynn is twenty seven hundred. Both of these guys can fly. I'm chasing stolen bases, which is not something that I do a ton. Uh, it's a more of a thing beginning with the new rules last year than it, than it had been uh, previously. Like this is, this is the elite stolen base spot of, of the entire league. Like Darvish is that easy to run on Scott. If he, if he, if he happens to walk Scott, he'll steal second and third without like without hesitation. So definitely interested in the, in the cheap young guys too. <laughs> Tanner Houch just gave me even more of a sweat. He came out and struck out the side. Oh, um, nice. What a ah, love to see it. Climb, um, climb. Love to see it. <laughs> um, I love this stolen base. So we don't have props up yet, but this might be one you bet both of their stolen base. And yeah. um, it'd be at plus money for both of them. Hopefully, um, I don't think it, it obviously won't be at you won't pay the juice on a stolen base hardly ever. So um I like this. Like I like this call. Darvish, like you said, very easy to steal against. So I like this call a lot. Um and they're cheap, so like you don't even have to like in DFS, you could just one off them in like a stack that you really like or something, and you can feel good about it. Yeah, so. I mean, if you get a walk, a stolen base, and a run from Scott at minimum price, you're happy with that. Like that works. Win too, though. Win yeah. at shortstop at twenty seven hundred. Yep. You know, stolen base there. I mean, and like I wouldn't put it past Scott to try to steal third too. Um, I watched that guy get on base the other day and like instantly like, Hey, I'm stealing second um, and, and proceed to do it. (laughs) So um, 
good for the Cardinals, like giving these young guys a chance. Um, hey, Oakland, just <laughs> I definitely directed <laughs> it at you. Um, so the Cardinals were kind of forced into it because of injuries in the outfield. So don't give they did send Scott down originally, and then they had uh Edmund started on the IL, new bars out, and uh Carlson's out too. So I don't they wouldn't have done it, but yeah, at least the, at least they did do it once once the opportunity presented itself. The new rules though, speed is such a dangerous oh, yeah. thing. Like it's yep. such a dangerous thing. Because like having that speedster on your bench too, um, if you get into games that go into extra innings, is so huge for the extra inning rules too. So anyway, Padres bats. I love stacking against Miles Mikolas. I did it a lot last year. I did it on opening day. I'm going to do it again today. This team, I don't again. I don't think the Padres lineup is as good as it has been the last couple of years. There's still there's still a lot of potential in this lineup. So I'm very interested in the Padres today. Me too. Favorite stack on the slate. Um, like obviously Tatis, Machado, Kim, all great. They they have the cheap guys at the bottom that I I always like to be able to spend up for those big bats as well. Um, uh, Graham Pauly and Jackson Merrill, two two more young guys. Like I am fine playing both of them and then wrapping it around to the top with Tatis and Machado, Kim. It, like Bogarts is the guy I, I don't feel like I ever need. He's fine if he if he fits the build. Um, he does have that second base eligibility now, which is nice. Um, Cronenworth is, is kind of another guy in that mold where I don't love to play them, but in a stack, they're fine. Uh, but yeah, San Diego is my favorite stack on the slate. I don't know if they're my favorite stack, but I have a lot of interest in them. Um, man, really needed the Cardinals to get a hit there. Um, what the heck are they doing? Now I can complain about the Cardinals again because they stink. Um, all right, Giants and Dodgers. I'm going to have to watch the Cardinals game after this. Oh, gosh, watching the Cardinals. <laughs> I say it just because I know Derek. the chat. chat. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, I actually have – I mean, I almost pitched for the Cardinals, so I have. A, I like the Cardinals. Um, there you go. <laughs> All right, San Francisco at LA taking on the Dodgers. Uh, seven and a half total. Dodgers, 196 favorite. We're going to see that a lot this year. It doesn't matter who's pitching. Logan Webb on the hill for San Francisco. We're going to get a bullpen type of situation here for the Dodgers today. They'll open. Yarbrough will come in. The opener will probably go one or two, and then Yarbrough will probably go like two to four. Uh, it's, a, it's a straight bullpen game for the Dodgers. They they announced it a little while ago, right before we got started. I'm glad they did before we got started because it was supposed to be Glass now, and I'd actually have interest in Glass now. We'll talk about him tomorrow because he'll pitch tomorrow. But um, any interest in Logan Webb here? I said it earlier, and I probably won't play a starting pitcher against the Dodgers all all season long. Um, I think Logan Webb is a fantastic starting pitcher. He's not a strikeout guy. I just see it. I find it really hard to believe he's going to put up a score that I need. On, on today's slate yeah i'm out <laughs> uh, okay i will say like if i was playing like 150 and wanted to get like three to five teams with him sure just because anything can happen but uh, and i will say like the addition of like tiosca hernandez the bottom half of this lineup definitely has a lot of strikeouts in it but they're still one of the best teams in baseball against right into pitching um you got to be really on your stuff to beat this team webb throws a lot of strikes and generates a lot of ground balls uh, not touching the opener situation. There's too many like Yarbrough's 8,200. There's too many good pitchers on the slate today to pay 8,200 for Yarbrough. Um, yeah, even in a price? solid, solid <laughs> spot. I mean, if he, if we knew he'd throw like five innings here, sure. Like you could roll the dice, but no chance I'm playing him here at this price point. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Just start him. Let him go 80 pitches, but I get it. I, I understand it. Um, giants bats. New coaching definitely has led to less pinch hitting so far. Um, I still don't think I want to do it here. Is there, I mean, Slater, Solaire, maybe Solaire or Chapman, like one offs. They are, they are just so good against lefties. They're going to get one or two at bats against Yarbrough. Solaire or Chapman, one offs, I think is, is fine here, but I don't want to stack the Giants today. Yeah. I, it's really weird strange to me that they're opening with a lefty when they have a lefty long early. I know. I know. Like, what are they doing? I think that like, it, it makes me have more interest in San Francisco. Um, yeah. Like I think Solaire is safe anyway. I think Chapman is safe anyway, uh, but they're platoon guys. Um, 
well, I'm losing his name now. Where Slater is the guy. Like the, he always like if a lefty opener would come in, you'd be at risk of one at bat. Uh, yep. Lefty opener, righty follower, he, he, one at bat, and he's out of the game. Um, I think you can play these guys. Wilmer Flores, another guy. Like if you if you tell me I'm getting six innings of a left handed pitcher on the mound, I don't care how it comes. Um, I, I have some interest in in the righties here. Solaire, I'm interested in regardless. Chapman, kind of the same same story. Estrada is fine. I, I don't know if I full stack it here. But I, I do have interest in the Giants, um, and obviously the righties. You make a good point about the opener being a lefty as well. Um, I, had, I saw that earlier, and I totally forgot. But, yeah, maybe maybe a little three-man with Slater, Solaire, Chapman. I think that's fine. Um, Flores always in play, too. So, And I don't – and for what it's worth, like – when a righty comes in, Solaire, Chapman, and Flores probably don't come out of the game. So, like, if right. you do a three man with those guys, like Slater has the potential to get pinch hit for like Yaz at some point. So, I don't hate the idea of doing like a three man with Solaire, Chapman, Flores, getting the two or three at bats against the lefties, and then getting the bullpen. So, uh, Dodgers bats. Logan Webb's a good pitcher. Um, as much as I don't want to play Logan Webb, I don't know if I necessarily. I'm going to go out of my way to stack the Dodgers at their price point. Um, I will say, like, Max Muncy's a huge fly ball guy. Um, Logan Webb is a huge ground ball guy. So, like, when Muncy makes contact against Webb, it's going to be fantastic com- contact. Like, right? it's going to be fly, like, line drive type contact. Um, any interest here in the Dodgers' bets? Yeah, you have to play the Dodgers on every slate that they're on. I no matter what pitcher they're facing. I I do believe that Brandon uh Brandon Logan Webb is a, a I very did the good same pitcher. thing, dude. It's like just we did we just did the same <laughs> thing. I did the exact same thing. Yeah. Um he he's Logan Webb is a, an elite pitcher. Like he's he's not the best DFS pitcher, but he's a true ace in the game. I still think you need to stack some Dodgers against him. The offense is that powerful, that that potent, that good. Um, I love the Muncie call I, at 4,300. Like he's a guy who can be frustrating to roster because you'll play him three days in a row and, and he won't do much, but that fourth day he'll hit two home runs. So just keep playing Max Muncie. James Outman is kind of the same way. A um, little bit of a slow start for him, but really talented hitter. I'm going to keep playing him. Um, price keeps coming down on him. Uh, he's down to 4k. So give me Outman. The bottom of the order Dodgers is going to be a thing for me all season long. Obviously, I want to play Betts and Otani and Freeman as much as I can, but I love the bottom of the order too because it's way stronger than most bottoms. All right. Um, that's it. That was all the games. We'll get faster at this as the season goes, but Tuesdays are big slates, um, and we're going to have like big prize pools on Tuesdays, so we, we, we're going to spend a little extra time on, on Tuesdays just in general. I saw Paxton. Someone in chat, let me know how many pitches Paxton. I saw that they just took him out of the game. Five strikeouts, five walks, four hits, five innings. Um, I'm just curious how many pitches Paxton threw. That's all. If someone wants to tell me. If not, I'll look after. I've got it right here. 97 pitches. Dude, that's what we want to see, though, right? (laughs) Yeah. Like, the walks will start to come down, but that's what we want to see from Paxton. Love to see it. All right. Morning grind game under 8K to get six or more strikeouts. Who do you got? I'm going to go Casey Mize. Um, Mets have a little bit more strikeouts, a few more strikeouts in their lineup this year than last. Mize is an elite arm talent. Coming back from injury, strikeout stuff was there in spring training. I like it. I'm going to go to Renardo Lopez. The velocity is there. Hopefully um, moving back to a starting role, he'll have some stuff here. So give me Renardo Lopez over 8K to go under 15. Who is your bust today? And you cannot say Ryan Yarbrough. <laughs> Fair That's enough, you, because he's you, way you, overpriced. Yeah, uh, way. way I'm, I'm going to actually go out on a limb. I'm going all the way to the top. Give me Luis Castillo is going under 15 against Cleveland. I don't hate that call. Um, I should be like, I'm going to take Yarbrough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me, I'm give the me host Darvish. The rules. <laughs> no, I, I, so I like Castillo and Darvish. Um, I think those, and like Fauda is like, I really going to focus like spending up on Gallon and Beaver today when I'm spending up. And I think there's a lot of good mid tier options 
Um, we talked about Bayo. We talked about Lopez. We talked about Mize. I think there's a lot of options today. Um, I just probably named the five guys that I'll end up pitching today. Yep. Over 4K to go yard. Who is hitting a bomb today? I am going back to Jordan Alvarez until it happens. Um, <laughs> he is a top <laughs> three hitter in baseball. This dude is, is going to get one here real soon. Uh, Barrio struggles with left-handed power. Love Jordan today. It's not going to be a Jose Abreu situation from last year. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> the Astros are in uh, trouble if it is. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of money that they have sitting there if that happens. Um, I like Christian Walker a lot today. I'm going to go Christian Walker to hit a home run off of uh, Cortez. Love it. Uh, under 4K to get two hits. Who do you got? I'm going to go Blaze Alexander, uh, picking on Nestor a little bit myself. Um, cheap guy, but big talent. Um, should should be in the lineup there against the lefty. I like that. Um, I'm going to go to my my dude here, Kerry Carpenter. Uh, I really like him just in general. Like I said, I played him a lot towards the end of last year. Two multi-hit games in his first um, two games that he's played this year. Platooning, I don't hate it, but... Um, he should, he, he's not a guy that I'm too worried about, like getting pinch hit for, um, they've given him in the at bats when, um, he started. So give me Kerry Carpenter to get two hits today. Stack to score six or more runs. Who's getting the job done today. They're letting me down a little on Monday night here, but I'm going right back to him. The Padres are, are my team. Michaelis just a little bit better strikeout stuff in that first start, but generally doesn't miss a ton of bats. Um, think he can be picked on. Yeah, uh, chat just said um, Tatis hit a bomb into the second deck. Um, nice. So maybe you played him and he's helping you out. I got some Tatis for sure. I'm going to go to Arizona. I just don't believe in what we saw so far from Cortez in spring. Um, he was really struggling with command in his first start of the season as well. That was against Houston. This is another really tough spot for him against Arizona in a tough ballpark. We have all those like potential weather games, and then we have this beautiful game in Arizona. So give me the Diamondbacks to score six or more runs today. Um, I didn't see any player props up yet. I, I love talking player props. Uh, did you have something that you saw that you like? So th there was nothing up before we started this show, and I had one specific prop and one specific number in mind. Shane Bieber, six and a half Ks. Go hammer that over right now. Like that, that's too low. Seattle, second highest strikeout rate in baseball last year. Shane Bieber looked electric on opening day. I know it was the A's, but I, I totally buy into the improvements that he made at driveline over the offseason. Really think Shane Bieber is back to being an elite pitcher. Six and a half Ks is too low for Shane Bieber. Yeah, I'm okay. So a couple props that I am interested in when they come out, uh, because again, we don't have it. I'm going to be looking at um, Miles Mikolas under strikeouts. Uh, that's that's one that I think is really solid. Darvish under strikeouts. If it comes in at six and a half, I like the under on Darvish's strikeout number. If it's six and a half today, and then I want to see what Luis Castillo's strikeout prop comes in at. Um, that's another one that I potentially like the under if it comes in at six and a half. So. I looked, nothing up yet. So those are a few that I'm going to be kind of looking at. Baseball props usually start rolling out around this time and early into the morning, um, but nothing up right now that I feel like we could take advantage of. Um, any any lines or anything that you like today? I, I'm on the Guardians money line as well. They're slight underdogs to Luis Castillo and the Mariners, but um, I like Cleveland minus 102 right near even money. Um, I, I, again, this is basically just backing Bieber and Castillo struggled in his first start. Bieber looked amazing. Um, I feel like the Cleveland's just a slightly better team. So give me the guardians at, at minus one Oh two is where I got them. I don't hate that at all. I am, gosh, I am leaning this right now. I'm not, I'm, I didn't bet this, but I'm definitely leaning this right now. I kind of like the Cardinals. And Padres to go over seven and a half. I want to dig into it a little bit more. I think there's going to be runs scored in this game. So I kind of like the over in this Padres Cardinals game. Hate the ballpark, but I think both of these offenses have the upside to get this game over seven and a half. So, um, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully the Cardinals get it going right here. They got one, two, three, four coming up first and second, no outs. And uh, let's help my sweat. We're going to get out of here, though, for the podcast. We're back tomorrow. Don't forget 
Wednesday night for the Thursday podcast is the eight year anniversary show for the morning grind. We're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff, giving away some stuff on the show. So uh, special guest on the show with me on Wednesday night for Thursday's podcast. So come hang out with us on YouTube. If you haven't already subscribe to the Roto grinders morning grind YouTube page. Hope everyone has a fantastic Tuesday back tomorrow. Talking baseball. Good luck, everyone. We'll see you then.